Welcome to episode three of the Slab Podcast, everybody. I appreciate all the love and support. It is awesome. Greatly appreciate it. Today, we're talking about new cards, stuff coming out, and some big auctions that just happened over this past weekend. But of course, we got to jump into the first thing, the most like topic question from the previous video. <laughs> you all right, man? You all right? Yeah. This is funny. It just it was a funny comment. <laughs> we got, we're going to jump into the most liked comment. So basically, I had made a comment at the end of the video, or the I think it was the beginning of the video. We changed it up. Um, a spicy topic saying Collecticon is going to die in two and a half years. And, of course, old school Pokemon had to make a comment on it. His, his comment said, Collecticon going away in two and a half years? Question mark, exclamation point, X cluster. Like, he, no, he did not dis, He did not agree with me. So he said, I want some of what you're smoking, Josh. Not a chance Collecticon <laughs> dies anytime soon. That being said, Professor Oak, what do you think? What do you think about Nick's comment that had uh, several likes on it? Hey, everyone. Uh, Nick, first of all, you missed a huge opportunity to say, I want some of what you're smoking, Josh. You, you had to build in the green shiz into that, yeah. surely. Like, that was the pinnacle opportunity to use that. Yep. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I think it's going to be one or the other. Every uh, picture and video I've seen, it's been crazy. It's been busy. Everyone's been buzzing and bustling. When I was there in Orlando last year, it was pretty busy, like bordering uncomfortable. The sound volume being so high that the uh, cilia in my lungs were vibrating. Um, definitely uh, an experience, you could say that. Um, but with that, I think it could escalate and get even bigger and busier. The hobby is pretty on fire still. Right, we've got like ETBs being snatched up and singles going for crazy prices, high and low cards and games, all different things. Prices are wacky at the moment. What we do know is there's still a lot of people and a lot of eyes on this stuff, and there's money floating around and being thrown around. There's a lot going on, right? There's there's definitely things happening. So if right now that's still live and up and coming and and crazy, just generally the hobby. And we've got new sets coming out, Scarlet and Violet's coming out with Pokemon. There's going to be new sports card sets coming out. You know, there's people looking forward to um, Fanatics that are going to be, you know, making cards, that kind of stuff. We've still got some cool changes coming in, some new stuff. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I don't think it's going to die. I think it, worst case scenario, it stays as good as it is right now. Um, worst case? Worst case scenario, wow. it stays stays that's, busy and bustling. Yeah, that's pretty good. Old school selling there. I feel like he knows uh, a decent chunk of like what's going on. He's he's an active part of it. But then, so have you. You've been there and sold. So it's hard for me to have that bias on either end when you guys are talking about this. But what's your response? I want to know your response for Nick. Yeah, so I guess the main reason I kind of said that um, coming out of COVID, obviously, I guess you can kind of say that, but there's still thousands of people dying in China to the, a new virus. So it's here we go. Everybody buckle up. But uh, that could definitely put an impact on it, that, that happening again. But uh, not thinking about that, that's definitely not what I was thinking about. But generally, it's just the number of different cons popping up, TCG con, anime con. Gen Con's coming back. Just when is it too much? Luckily, uh, Collecticon only added one uh, event, I think, this year. They have now two Texas events, which is like makes it seven or eight, which is good. I'm glad they didn't keep doubling it or adding three or four shows every year because for the vendors, sometimes it can become too much, I think. Um, and having vended pretty much every other one I've gone to, it's, I don't know, it's obviously the people are there and it's awesome, but I do think it's going to get, um, old at some point. I don't know. They got to keep it fresh with the, the different talent coming in. 
They did that a little bit for Orlando. You got the East Side Boys coming in, ready to get low, that's for sure. Um, I love that song in Need for Speed Underground. Listen to it on repeat. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Good game. Yep. <laughs> but I don't know. I just think there's too much different crap going on, um, and people – can get older. Like, how many are you going to go to Collecticon every year in Dallas? I guess I don't know. It's it's interesting. I w- I wish there was one in Michigan. So I I do hope they continue to grow. I do not hope they die in two and a half years. Um, I hope that it is here for the long term. I hope it becomes like the next Gen Con. But for this type of market, TCGs and stuff, it's uh they're doing great work. Um, it seems they're growing right now, so it's but so is everybody else. The TCG cons, pop cons, this stuff is going crazy right now. And when is it too much? And people are kind of just not going because it's all, all it's going to take is somebody, all of us to go to Orlando one time and completely crap the bed and not get sales. Be like, I don't know if that's worth it anymore, boys. I'm going to kind of chill at home, and then you just get less and less vendors. but as of right now, things are selling out instantly. When tables are going open for sale, they're selling out in two weekends. It's going really good. So kind of some positives and negatives, but I do, I don't know, I kind of wanted to ruffle some feathers, kind of what I want to do. I do think there's a good chance they're around in two and a half years, but if the things keep popping off like crazy, and hopefully they do kind of stunt their growth and don't keep adding new shows, I think I got a good number going right now, so. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to uh, Orlando in a month. I think that's a key point. I think that's a very, very important point. Um, the Orlando one is essentially once a year. I don't have anything else anywhere close to me. You know, Texas, Miami, to, TCG Con, Tampa, TCG Con. That's the one that I went to. Yeah. I think. I think that was TCG Con. Yeah, I like yeah. say there's a few, but. Um, Collect Connect was very, very different to TCG yeah. Con. I mean, it was like two completely different experiences. Um, I think that is probably the biggest savior that they're not not at the moment. Anyway, not not to say they won't, but they don't have like a a com- um, a consistent like every first Sunday of the month. It's like happening in the same location or something. Like it's like once a year, it comes into town, and I get to see all the other cool Pokemon people that are, that you know that are attending and flying in. And there's going to be different cards I'll get to see in games and shirts and artworks, and you know, famous people, the other people doing signatures and stuff. There's there's yep. a lot going on with it. That's like that's pretty special time, honestly. Like I'm really genuinely excited about it to see the people you know that are going to be there. I think it's more than just what collector kind of setting up. I think there's a lot of like, it is what you make it, make of it kind of thing. Like there's a lot of cool people that are going to be there and going to make it pretty special. I I think that's a big part of it for me. And that's why I think tickets are going to sell because people want to be in it for more than just what they're providing because no one's going there to see ice, was it? Iced tea with lemon. Vanilla ice. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's almost going to see that guy. Like, it was cool seeing him. Like, it was interesting. But, uh, yeah, the, the tinnitus in my ears is still still ringing a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, it gets loud in there, man. That's for dang sure. <sighs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I felt bad for Nick. I, I remember seeing his table and, like, the whole dynamic of the room changed when that guy started playing. Like the whole, yeah. it was like, I was like, Oh man, like this is like, this must be difficult to try and work in this environment. And like people are like focusing on him and it was just so loud. Yeah. It was crazy. There's no way I could have taken my, my daughter in there way too loud. I know. Kid. Yep. Yeah. I would not be comfortable taking my two and five, two and four year old in there. It would be, a terrible experience. It would be a terrible yeah. experience. Too many people yeah. bumping shoulders, feel like you're in high school again, just ready to truck somebody. I feel like they need to fix that. I feel like that's an issue. 
Yeah, capacity. That's just, that's it. They're just selling it. Like there was definitely exceeded capacity in Long Beach on day one, uh, for sure. I don't know how that was allowed with any any <laughs> any knowledge of fire safety. Definitely was exceeding capacity. Crazy. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, you know, but it'll be good, man. Looking forward to Collecticon, and hopefully Same. we exceed past two and a half years. That's a long ways away. That's a long ways away. Pokemon could be in a whole different realm by then. Yeah, I'm excited to see what this year brings alone. No matter even thinking about you know the other years and stuff, I like guess it's, it's an exciting, exciting hobby. It just in general, like collecting. You know, obviously it's there's Pokemon. You know, we've both got, and every, most other people at home have lots of other different things too that we play around with. But uh, just just generally being in it and being around those people, it's just, just fun. Yeah, the experience of it. Oh, yeah. I wonder if I wonder if Matazu will still be as popping as it was when I was there last time. It was that was pretty wild. Yeah, I would say so. Did you see their prize structure? Talk about it a little bit of their tournaments and stuff. Hear about it? Um, I saw a little bit of um, what Dan. Um, posted what he talked yeah. about. It it looks like they're pretty serious. <laughs> like it it seems like it's not like a little thing. Like they've yeah. got a lot going on. They've been serious about some of the artworks that they're doing. Uh, seem to be stepping up. You know they've put a lot of effort into uh, into their sets. They've been pretty. Uh, what do you call it? Like. St- like set definition or I forget what the phrase is, set identity. Like I feel like each set has really had some form of identity and, and you know, cards that relate to it. So I think that helps with gauging interest, you know, yeah. stuff sells well or not. But yeah, I don't, I don't know what the future holds for them. Um, they've got the bonus that like, you know, people are grading their cards, which is, like yeah. step in the right direction to people with money and people that are serious about those things because obviously they're not playing with graded slabs you're like you know you're probably not yeah. playing with them so that that adds like a different layer of the hobby into into uh wanting to purchase or even if it's on the secondary market you know still funding um yeah i don't know yeah i know the uh i think the first tournament is limited to 128 people of their seven tournament series they got this year, 128 people. Top 32 is getting paid. I think the top six or the 16 through 32 gets $500 a person. First place is, I think, 20 grand. So yeah. you think about it one in 128 chances of getting 20 grand, and it's a little bit of skill base to get there. That's crazy. And I, I may actually commented on a Yu Gi Oh! player's post recently. Because he had commented about a new TCG has having good prize support, and it was like ten thousand dollars for first place, and that was it, something <laughs> like that. And I commented, I was like, "Hey, have you considered MetaZoo? Like all seriousness?" And I was like, "It's twenty thousand, like crazy money." Um, and he literally clapped back. He's like, "I would never touch that with a ten foot pole." Didn't ask why, but he's like <laughs> hard line in the sand. He's like. You you Gil players like money. Um, they like flipping stuff, and they do like. That's why they go to tournaments to win prize cards, sell them to get more money. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's pretty wild. I've really a lot of thought going into like getting a team together for MetaZoo and paying for their flights and splitting money, and there's a lot of money in those tournaments for how little they are. Yeah, I mean, uh, poker game. Right, it's it's almost like a poker game. Everybody likes poker, like playing. But if you had the chance of to bubble, you have to be in. You have to finish thirty third. Like that's crazy. <laughs> like yeah. top thirty two. That's fantastic to know yeah. that you can win and get paid something. Pay for your um, trip, five hundred bucks. Yeah, with that many people buying in, like I, I think it seems like a good experience. If if I had the ability to, I'd 100 percent be doing that stuff, and I and I'd enjoy it. You know, you get to yeah. to around and talk with people, have fun, play a game, concentrate, like get into something, switch off from the world, potentially win money, travel. Like, there's so many benefits to that stuff. I'm surprised more people aren't doing it, screaming about it in like every 
like game honestly like you'd think people would want to like touch every single um like uh competition you know every single excuse me every single tournament if you're into it because it's all the same like you take your time crafting your deck you know with yeah. with I heard basic talking about it, crafting the right cards, trying to figure out which ones are, are going to work well against this. The new set is coming out. What what do I need to like, you know, defend against the new set that, that me have a new deck from and blinging it out. That's even part of it. You know, the, getting your fancy sleeves and all the little bits, not even just the cards, you know, coins and dice. And there's so much to it. Like there's a hobby itself, just, just playing. So yeah. Yeah, I, I find it surprising that there isn't more people that it, doing multiple games, you know, because F- Flesh and Blood's been doing well too, right? They're, that's got a huge following right now. Flesh and Blood, One Piece, the One Piece is popping off. So One Piece was able to pull Squeak's Game World back into TCGs. He left Pokemon playing competitively and has stood by the wayside just selling and buying and selling, but now it's pulled him into playing flesh and blood or not flesh and blood one piece in one person piece, yeah uh I, I saw mason post a picture he has at capacity for his game store 64 people um for how one cool piece was that yeah. how awesome was that picture that was cool yeah oh my god it's awesome man it's awesome seeing uh people out and about not and having to worry about masks right now and it's good it's good stuff for the economy yeah, it feels good. I felt good for Mason too. Like that, that's got to feel like got to be a sense of pride there. Of like you got like people want to be at your store playing and having fun, like hosting. For me, hosting, I was originally a chef, you know, in my past life, and like making food and hosting for people's like tickles all my fancies. Like that's yeah. that's the stuff that I love, and that, I really saw some of that in that picture that he posted. Like. Could have that sense of like pride and enjoyment from it. I was really happy for him. Yeah, it's a lot of people in those seats, man. They all they all like food and drink and buying singles and completing decks, getting sleeves, getting deck boxes, play mats. Adds up quick. Yeah, I remember him saying that more people are buying and selling slabs there too. Uh, there's a, I mean, it's been a while, but I, I remember him saying he had like maybe 10 slabs at the store at one point and that he's got like literal shelves of them yeah he's got like loads of them so that's cool too like seeing the the hobby of his clientele in that local area shifting that's that's uh that's fun yeah that's gonna be fun for him like keeping it different like things changing or oh, now i gotta learn about this now i gotta figure out price on this like what do i buy at this like there's so many different areas of the hobby like not just collectors not just flippers and scalpers but like in-person stores online stores you know auctions is it all it's all very interesting to me <laughs> yeah 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 it's it's gonna be an epic 2023 for tournaments and that growing and just Lorcana coming out this year I'm really curious to see how that goes now we're talking about every tcg besides pokemon we'll get into pokemon don't worry people but Lorcana <laughs> coming out this year, it's just gonna a whole nother speculative bubble that could possibly pop and explode. And it uh time will tell. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure on that one. Uh there seems to be some pretty serious interest right now. Like a lot more serious than I was expecting. Um, so I think I was maybe naive with how big that one was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a lot more chilled out than what it was. Um, it seems like some people are pretty serious. There's like some some big dollars being sent on those spent on those slabs. So I'm excited to see what happens with it. Yeah, we're corner to the moon, I guess. Do if the say TCG player a hundred dollar box for Lorcana, you buying any? A hundred bucks? Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, yeah, that's easy doable. Yeah, I think. Like people talk to me about um, like Mario, Luigi, Pikachu boxes and like the, that kind of stuff. Like, oh, you're buying that stuff? Like, no, nah, I'm not. Like, it's just like it's way too crazy. But yeah, something fun and like part of, uh, yeah, just part of like history, really. Just what a new thing coming out, something exciting. 
maybe I open it and grade a couple, you know, for the collection, give out as gifts, whatever. But uh, yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah, I'd get in it. I've yeah. got a I've got a box of Crown Zenith that, that I just bought at the store. It's kicking myself. It's so getting back to Mason again. He did a live break the other day, and um, I missed it. I got wrapped up with the with the kids. I, I missed it. They ended up getting to to buy one, and then I was in Walmart and. They restocked for the first time I think I've ever seen them actually do a restock at my Walmart. I was amazed. Nice. They had they had everything. I mean, Panini Prism, like like football. They had loads of Yu Gi Oh, uh, Magic. Um, they had stuff. They had a, one thing that I'd never even seen before. I should have taken a picture of it, but they restocked like everything jam packed. So I grabbed a, an ETB of. Crown Zenith. So I'm excited to crack that Pikachu hunting. Oh yeah! Before we get into that, we uh, we skip past it. We got to go back to the getting spicy with it. So Ooh. we got to we got to talk about this topic real quick. Then we're gonna hop into Crown Zenith talk about that. But like every week, so we're gonna list the topic, post the comment of the topic we list. It's gonna be something spicy, drama, or what we think could happen maybe this year. And then the most liked comment in the video will be the first topic of the next video. So, Oak, hit me with what you got. Yeah, um, I think for me, I kind of want to piggyback off this one. I think that was a good one. And I, 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 what I think is probably more realistic is what not being gone in two and a half years. And the quick, fast, expensive um, purchase craziness that's going on i feel like that they could potentially make some errors and burn people out a little bit if they don't keep up with the times and what's happening in in the in the hobby and uh keep an eye on how hot the fire is because at, at the moment things are hot for some people but for the majority things have definitely cooled down a little bit i think they need to adapt and be dynamic over the next couple of years if they're going to keep alive um so yeah i think i'm gonna say in the next two years i'm gonna make it even spicier what not what not oh, yeah. done in two That'd years discussion i definitely uh got a lot for that one um Blo my just just adds up i definitely just blew any sponsorship that i would ever have from what not and i don't even care <laughs> no it's all right it's all right um I'm also going to do the same thing. No, maybe not. Uh, Pokemon will perpetually be behind in 2023 and never catch up. Printing wise, printing it. We're going to be. We're going to be. They're going to be behind. It's not going to get better. Uh, hold on to your seats. So, talk about that next week if that's uh, yeah. down below in the comments. Go like whichever comment you like. Post one. Post one you like yourself. Like old school Pokemon. It's not. It's not always us winning. So. Go like a post that you think, and we'd like to talk about. So, yeah, don't don't listen to him, guys. Just click like on mine. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> you got to win this one time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I, yeah, neither of us have won. It was uh, Brandon Baker, then old school. So we're just we're just losers here, wasting yeah. our spinning our wheels in the mud. We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I don't need to win. Um. Okay. So, Kranzina. Have you bought any Crown Zenith? I have not seen any pictures. I did last night at 11 p.m. for the first time on PokemonCenter.com. Was it the uh, exclusive one? Yeah. After I had did a little bit of rabbit hole digging, I was like, I just, I had been searching Crown Zenith on eBay, just kind of following it because I had made a video whatever it was a month ago saying i think crown zenith just based on the cards the arts alone is going to be like the next evolving skies i'm not going to invest into it by any means because i don't like etbs they're too bulky too big you only get 10 12 packs versus 36 and it's twice the size of a booster box i don't have space in my house to buy a bajillion of them mm -hmm. i would love to if there was a booster box but i'm not going to um, so I thought speculatively, I think this sets a banger, called it out. Um, have only done that a couple other times. So looking at it, I know P football Pete sold roughly 4,100 ETBs in the first weekend. Um, oh my god, 
it went up 400 overnight. Essentially, I saw it at 3,700. The next day, it was at 4,100. Like, it was just insane. Um, but you could still pick them up. The regular ETVs, 50 to 60 bucks um, on eBay. But I know you could still find them. What is it, 39.99 at Walmart or 49.99? 49. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. pumped up. Yep. So me seeing all that and seeing auction sell of the premium ETBs at like a hundred bucks. Um, I was like, I'm just going to go on Pokemon center, buy four of these would love to open a couple. I might keep one for whatever reason. Cause I have like one of every box, at least that I really like. I have like evolving skies and evolutions, but um, yeah, I think it uh, it's pretty sick, man. I love, love it so far. You know what I really like about just specifically about the set is there isn't just like one or two big hitters. Like there's so many good artworks in there and it just can appeal to so many different people. Like yeah. everybody has a card in there that, that they have a chase and they're not all the same. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the first set that I've ever really consciously felt that from people. Like people posting random cards from it and like really being excited about it not just the same card oh my god i pulled it i pulled it i pulled it like yeah. it's none of that it's like i pulled my chase I, oh my god look at this one that i pulled and this one oh my god i got five cool ones from this set i'm really excited to open mine i, I, I can't wait just just to see what i get because there's just so many in there that i love there's some really cool ones that yep. detail Dear Lord, there's a ditto. I don't know if you saw the, the new saw post yeah. it. Oh my god, that is so cute. That and it's like a common or uncommon or whatever. Like it's like not even yeah. a fancy one. It's just like such a cool artwork. They've really they've put some effort in the artists this past year, this past year or so. Like they've they've really have they've put a lot of effort in. So it's cool. It's fun. Um, yeah, yeah, another big big set with a lot of variation. Um. In terms of investing, uh, buying boxes, that kind of stuff, um, I remember I bought some Celebrations uh, ETBs, the Pokemon Center exclusive ones. I think I sold them for like, what were they, like 65, I think? I think I sold them for 130. Like I sold them like double. Yeah. But I did I did free ship. I think I did free shipping on it, so I paid the shipping. So I didn't really double my that money box, yeah. plus fees and stuff. Like, yeah, made some cash. Um, and then after that, I remember thinking, like, wow, these are good. And I, I did it with a couple of other, you know, sets that, you know, didn't quite hit the same amount of money uh, profit-wise. But this one I think could be a good one, even though I think it's probably printed a lot. I think it's one that people are probably opening a lot. And yeah. I think less are going to be sealed than maybe some other ETBs. Um, I, I definitely think that's the same with like um, uh, Evolving Skies too. Like people like to rip it, try and chase the Moonbrion. And I think for that reason, sealed stuff is going to order premium because I don't know. I've got theories, whatever. But I, I, I do just think like this is such a fun set and it feels like we're like, kicking off the end of the saga of sword and shield like it feels yep. like we've we're bringing like a, a brilliant like drum roll finale you know bells and whistles and trumpets and everything like this is like such a fun crazy set to, to end the series with um yeah the generation whatever you want to call it um yeah i, I think it's a fun one yeah but inv invest in circling back to invest in I think it's investable. Yeah. Not not financial advice. No. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think it is. Um, tied in with what you were saying about potentially being behind on printing, um, they don't seem to have been doing a fantastic job with Millennium Print Group of some stuff, but then overprinting some other stuff. So I don't know what their plan is, what they're doing, how they're making those decisions. This set. Is going to have a lot of demand, I think. Yeah, yeah. no, it uh, seems that way so far. What is uh, besides the ditto? What uh, what other chase card are you looking for? Uh, Pikachu is obviously uh, 
super stereotypical, but that's a good one. Um, uh, I like the gold, you know, like Giratina Oculus, like the yeah. the fancy yeah. looking ones. Like I think I think they look nice. They look flashy. That I, my head's kind of telling me like you should like this card. Like this is something you should like. Oh, if my heart's fully in it, but my head's yeah. like, yeah, that's like that's a cool artwork. Like I should like this. Um, and I like the idea of the um, some of the like more uh, calm artworks that I've seen. I've seen some like pretty chill ones that are like yep. not too complex and not like that last Giratina that we just had. It was like so complex the artwork. There's like so much going on, so busy. It feels like it's like effort to like look at it and enjoy it. Whereas some of these artworks, much like with the uh, the hoot hoot that the 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 one that I that I graded, you know, from um Bat region. Um like that's such a simple calm artwork. It's like easy to enjoy. There's quite a few cards in this set uh like that. So yeah, I haven't seen every card yet. I've been trying because I want to open it and enjoy it. I've been trying not to look at too many spoilers. Obviously I've seen everybody's big hits because they've been posting them in Discord and YouTube videos and stuff, but much of the common and uncommons, I've tried not to op see too many openings of, yeah. of that stuff. Um, I watched Dan open some, that was fun. Um, he opened, he opened some and uh, a couple other people, I've seen a couple other people the other day open some, but there's so many cards. I mean, there's, probably still loads and they skip by all the comments that I want to see anyway. So what, yep. about, what about you? Was there anything that stands out to you? In the set? Yeah, I, would, I would love a PSA 10 set of the three legendary dogs. Um, those things look pretty sick, man. I'm uh, same. Yeah. I don't have the Neo revelation ones out of my price range. I don't, I, I respect the cards for what they are. I'd rather get the Japanese ones. Just to have the art, that's like that's one of those cards I'd probably just swing for that because it's way cheaper. Yeah, uh, way cheaper. <laughs> so these cards are freaking dope, though. I wish, uh, I wish the three arts played into each other a little bit more. They're kind of each their own thing. Mm, um, that's a good point. Like the one Entei's in front of a volcano, Raiko's running through like lightning storm, and God knows what Sweet Coon's even doing. I don't even remember, but. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's posted up, and yeah, I think that would be a really cool set to have those three. Um, so I'm gonna open some. This is so this is interesting. I have not really watched much of any pack openings for a long time. Like I've been out of like the Pokey Rev Leonhart game, still wow. am, but uh yeah. this time for this set, I've watched Mertz. Uh, Java Akuma, Catch em All Collectibles, all these people opening this. Some amazing. That's the same same three as me. Yeah. Um, Squeaks Game World was ripping some. So I I've gone and watched a lot more than I ever have because there's so many cards. It makes it kind of nice that for that aspect, the watching. Um, yeah. There being so many cards, it's easier to watch. You're not getting the same BS every time. Like. Java Kuma, I think he ripped 80 ish packs and he got a lot of variety because there are so many different mother effing hollows. It's insane. Um, but man, there's there's some sick cards. It's there, I don't know how they hopefully they're paying these artists good a good dang wage because the amount of work they got to be putting into these things has got to be insane. Yeah, the, it's it's it really is all. <laughs> It's art, yeah. It, it like truly is when you look at some of these these pictures. This isn't the, you know, the uh, the Polygon made on Microsoft Office or whatever. Like it's this is like true artists sitting down and, and making passion. Like they, they yeah. put passion on in, with that paintbrush, that pen, or whatever. Like the, whatever they they're using as a medium. It's it's it is. It's pretty cool. The uh the dogs that you're talking about, I love those too. I did I saw the the Suicune. They always bring me back to the games, like the old yeah. games, like when I first got into into the games, you know, yellow and crystal and stuff, like they always flash me back. It's such cool artwork. Same with the birds, you know, uh, you know, it's just more tread and zapdos and stuff, like, you know. It always just brings me back to like the root of like the love for it, the passion. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like Latios and Latias in Gen 3, they did not do as not as good as a oomph, like as as having a three, like a trilogy. Of course, you got Rayquaza in there mixed in with Latios, Latias, but Rayquaza, is, he deserves his own pedestal, but they yeah. definitely should have stuck to the three, because I definitely like the birds and then the dogs, and then should have did something. You should have had a third dragon that wasn't Rayquaza, but I don't think I'd consciously thought about that until you just said it. Yeah. Like, I knew it, but, yeah, I hadn't, like, really, like, thought about it that way. That's a really – that's a solid point, especially with the first few generations, those three being so different, yeah, drastically different, but blending together so well. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. No, that's interesting stuff. I uh, I definitely love the – some of the lore of Pokemon, it uh, keeps me uh, keeps me in tune. You don't but buy yeah. you don't buy ETBs though, right? ETBs, not until today, not until yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got the exclusive one, but you're not buying like regular ETBs and ripping ever really. That's like not your thing, is it? No, I haven't done that since I gave away like celebrations ETBs for, during Christmas a year ago. So, oh yeah. I don't own a single ETB right now until the ones from Pokemon Center get here. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be my first one. What about you? You got ETBs or? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm open to a lot of ETBs. Rip them boys <laughs> open. Are they open already? Yeah, they're all open. I've uh, I've been. <laughs> I have um, a problem. Yeah, I, I started an ETB collection with my thing, and then I realized like, Hey, these are cool packs. I go and open them up, and so I kept like opening them up on live streams and stuff, yeah. and dwindling, away, dwindling away at them. And then I was like, "Oh, I pulled like three good cards out of like fifteen ETBs. This sucks." So yeah. I basically like learned my lesson. I got burnt by the touch, and uh, yeah, just kind of buy one every so often, this or that, like one from each set, just so I got a few packs and. We've got the sleeves and stuff. My wife's a teacher, so I can give her build a little. I build like little mystery boxes for the kids. And give them like the dice and sleeves, and I pick out all cool cards and stuff. And yeah, that's whatever. That's cool. But yeah, I'm, the reason I ask is I don't really. I've never really bought booster boxes, um, and I don't know why. Like I just haven't done it. I've just felt like it's just easier just to grab a like. TPTB and open a few packs. I think I've just been so focused on like specific cards or slabs. Like I've been really into slabs. Like booster boxes just seems like almost like frivolous to me. Like it seems like it's more than what I want or what I need. When it's like I don't really want to try and collect a full set, really. But the value, sense? the value there is like it's crazy. Like if the booster box, assuming the ETB is thirty nine ninety nine, the booster box is probably around hundred bucks. Big difference. Three yeah. times the packs, at least generally. So it's uh, I don't know. That's that's where I see the value, and it's smaller, more compact, takes up less space. That's my big thing because I I have my booster box, my cases of Lost Origin just in my closet, taking up tons of space. I won't be buying more booster boxes until those ones are probably gone because I don't have space <laughs> it's crazy yeah yeah i probably should i should get into it more with, with booster boxes i don't know why that that's always kind of eluded me in some way yeah have you ever opened just a booster box i'm sure at all um i'm trying to think what set it was i did have one it might have been like I think it was fusion strike it wasn't a very exciting one Oof. it was like a year or so ago like it was it not too long ago, but um, yeah, I didn't really. I don't know. I have get... many, but I definitely see way more value just holding those over ETBs personally. But yeah, a set, a set like Brilliant Stars or like Crown Zenith, like that's a set where Booster Box would be. That'd be like peak. That'd be like peak fun that would be a lot of good fun i could see it but i don't want to open a, a booster box of battle styles like i don't I just like it's i don't know just seems like so much of stuff that i don't want yeah 
Yeah, going back to Lorcana a little bit, I would at a hundred dollars, I'm buying whatever a bunch. Yeah, um, it'll be cool to open with my daughter, and she would know all the cards coming out of it. Um, because we did that with the Weiss Schwartz Pixar set that came out, and that was last booster box I've opened to date. Um, and that was awesome opening it with the whole family, my wife checking it out, getting a kick out of the stuff. And yeah, um, it was really cool. So I hope to do that again when Lorcana comes out and maybe do a binder set for the first time of a modern set. That'd be really cool. Hopefully they don't, hopefully they make it binder settable. If you know what I mean? <laughs> like hopefully it's not 375 cards, but it is a base set. So usually those magic and Pokemon are generally pretty large. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. The the Lucana one's fun because we we all have a connection to at least one of the characters in it. Like there's going to be something. Like say if yeah. you've got kids, you've there's been no avoiding that. That's for sure. So yep. uh, every, everybody knows it. And I think Disney is more. This I think I feel like I'm giving hot takes all the way through. So booster boxes are uh, overrated. That's my first one. My second, no, my second one. This is my third one. Um, I feel like Disney is more socially acceptable than Pokemon. I feel like it's okay for adults to go to Disney World and be crazy and have Disney tattoos and stuff, like more than Pokemon, like people that are obsessed with Pokemon. Yeah, I I would agree with you, but I feel also Pokemon in the last four years has broken a lot of norms too. Um, it's come a long way, way, long way. Yeah, way more known and acceptable, and way more people that like realize it's just a bit of fun. Like it's not like, oh, it's a kids' game. No, it's just like it's fun. It's just silly and fun. Like it's just good, good good times. It's positive, which I love. I love that. Yeah. What? So, uh, not so amazing experience with Pokemon is just being in Pokemon and having friends and family that know I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it always comes down to money. Like it's, mm -hmm. um, that's what they, that's usually their question. Like, how much is this worth? Like, what is this? Like, why are you asking about my finance? Like literally it's my finances. Um, these are collectibles and I have money into it, but it always comes down to that. And they're like, what's your most expensive card? I'm like, chill out dude you don't even need to know like it's five dollars or something like that like yeah. Yeah, i'm a nerd i don't have any good cards just to mess with them but you have, ever have experiences like that where usually that's where the conversation leads quickly mm. no. no honestly but i think yeah. part of that is i'm not just showing them cards i'm showing them like I got random stuff that the, you can tell is worth nothing. Like, <laughs> look at it. It's just like, like it's worthless brick or brack or whatever the phrase is, just general crap. Um, yeah, just random stuff. And and the other part is like, I don't really like show or tell that many people unless I know they like Pokemon. And then at that point, the conversation is about the stuff because they are into Pokemon. You know, it's not like it's someone that isn't. And like you say, now nah, they want to talk about the money because they don't know anything about Pokemon. They don't know what to ask or like what yeah. to appreciate or whatever. So like, I feel like I haven't had a lot of that. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting, though, that you have that a lot because I think there has been a bit of uh, 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 just a part in the general world of like, Pokemon cards, Logan Paul, like spending crazy money on big Pokemon cards and greater cards are worth a fortune, whatever it is, like yeah. in a slab. And I think there's like these like expectations and things that people have maybe, like you're saying, where they think, oh, it's a special card and it's in slab. How much is it worth? It's got to be like worth money. I mean, it's worth nothing if I'm never going to sell it. Like it's worth zero. Like it's, it's mine. So, yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it's not it's yeah, it's not the best thing in the world for sure. So you're you're in a good position. Maybe it's self-inflicted because things I post on my YouTube, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit different and <laughs> stuff like that, but I'm not sure. Um my stuff's worth nothing, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't have anything in crazy numbers. Like I have things that I don't show and I yeah. do have, I've got a 
pretty humble but decent collection like of stuff like i've definitely spent some money uh but yeah i don't know well i'm curious to see if people in the comments are going to talk about that and their experiences if if when they talk about people let us know in the comments too i know i've got a spicy topic to post but maybe you could add in a sentence about that i'd, I'd be i'd be curious to hear what other people are, are hearing yep for sure um so you you don't you said you have one etb of crown zenith one that's it lonely lonely box that's it and i got some uh i'm uh i'm a dumbass and i bought some uh those pokeballs and i didn't realize they were the pokemon go uh pokeballs because the last oh. one i bought last one i bought had like two or three different packs in it so i was like oh i'll get this i'll see what packs are inside it and then um, I saw in the package it says Pokemon Go. I was like, okay, so just Pokemon Go then, I guess. I don't think there's anything else in there. So, yeah, I'm going to open them on a video. But, yeah, that's it. Got that and the uh, and the ETB. I haven't had much sealed because I just can't resist holding it. I just keep opening it every time that I have Yeah, you got, a, you got a problem. Every, I feel, every time I was watching on the live streams back in the day, you'd be like, hey, oh should God. I rip open this uh, Burning Shadows ETB or whatever? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Everybody's but... like, no, no. Don't do it. I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just burn through them, boys. Oh, my God. Yeah, two bourbons and I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I, I, was just, I just think it's so fun. It's just exciting, you know? I don't yeah. know. What do you think is the best card you ever pulled out of a pack? Oof. Um, I think I pulled the uh, Hollow Dark Charizard from Rocket. I feel like that was one that I pulled as a kid. My memory is a bit cloudy. Uh, I pulled bet. some cool, pulled some cool ones from 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 some of the Rocket packs that I had, and yeah, I don't know. I feel like I haven't had that much luck with like a lot of crazy stuff. You, you know what I've had really l good luck with is stuff that isn't in sets, like st like buying and taking chances on stuff that's like promos or like yeah, a couple of Japanese things like think like special delivery Bidu, special delivery Charizard, like both of those both hit PSA tens. Like just got a little bit lucky. I know obviously there's good ratios, but like. The one that I got just happened to be good. The Pikachu's from the 2000 World Collection, all graded nines and tens. Like it was like six tens and three nines or something crazy. Like I got really good luck with that. And just like generally, some like like of the things outside of the regular sets, I've had really good luck. Um, really good luck with getting them in good center and good condition and being cards that I love and enjoy. You know, at the time I can appreciate them. Um, what about you? I know you've opened some vintage lately. That uh, I remember watching oh, yeah. you open that that Japanese. Um, what's it called? A theme deck, a base deck. Would it? What was the? Oh yeah, of it? yeah, man. I even I forgot about that one too. Yeah, the uh, it was Japanese basic theme deck. Oh, it's power deck, basic whatever it was. Yeah. Um, pulled the Blastoise out of there. That was pretty huge. That was so cool watching it. That was. Sick, you just man. cranked it right there too. I was like. I was like, wait, you know, if we're gonna take it home. You're just like, uh, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I should have, I should have hyped it up more. Started screaming before I opened it, so I got a little bit more of a crowd because the three people around me. It was, it was cool. But um, the next time, next time, hopefully Dan brings another one. If Dan, if you bring one down to Orlando, I'll buy one same price. Um, heard it here first. Yeah. Uh, but that was sick. The other one, a couple others were Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I just remembered those as you were talking, mentioning some other things. But uh, Yada Garasu card from 2003, two, 2004, it came out. Um, probably 2003. Um, that was a sick card. Seeker rare card from that from that set. It's probably in a PSA 9, 200, 300 bucks, um, which is pretty cool. And a couple other Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which it was insane. It was just my luck. I don't is open that, vintage cards, and I got pretty lucky last is year. Is that the one from a couple of months ago? Like you just did? Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. My daughter was like sleeping right next door, and it was like <laughs> one in the morning, and I was like, I want to rip this so bad. I just ripped it. Oh god! The booster box weighed the packs, and 
I was the most excited I've been in a long time. That's Brought awesome. me right back. It was cool. Cool to encapsulate that, have that video for my life. Yeah, there's been a lot of cards where, it, I don't know, like, it's great chasing the Charizard, and it's great chasing, like, the Pikachu and the regular stuff, but there's been a lot of packs that I've opened where, like, I've stopped on a common, and I'm like, oh, that's cool artwork. Like, I like that. That's fun. Yeah. That's like a like an first time I'd seen this one. Like that, just that feeling of like discovery, and it just been like, oh, that's cool. Like I like that. That's that's a that's a cool feeling to me. Uh, I think that's part of that. Just like interest, I'm just so interested in it. I'm interested in the artworks and the cards and the sets and the games and the, just everything. I, I feel like, I feel like I'm pretty lucky. Just generally being naturally interested in things because I know some people like don't have hobbies and aren't really interested in stuff and the board and whatever, you know, yep. but I'm like, I like, I just like everything. I feel like I like everything. I'm into everything. I'm I have way too many hobbies. I'm way like way too interested. It's expensive. It's time consuming, but it's, it's fun. So every so often you open a pack and I'm sure with this crown Zenith, there's going to be cards in there that I didn't see in those openings. You know, there'll be a couple of even ones that I did see. And I'll, you know, go up to stop and enjoy it and kind of have a little look and think, oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, it'll cool up. Yeah. No, it'll be, I'm looking forward. Hopefully, you're going to upload a video or open in some of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to uh, film it yesterday and then I got caught up trying to get the baby to sleep, um, giving us some milk. For those that don't know, I have a one month old. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to try and film it this week. And I actually have a little video coming out um, kind of about Ancient Mew, not the character, the uh, Pokemon, but actually the... The person? Uh, yeah, what? Is he a Poketuba? He will be after this video. This This one is going to be for him. Don't want to build it up too much. It's nothing that crazy. But... Uh, yeah, there's there's just a little thing, a little fun thing I have up my sleeve. So watch out for that, guys. That's gonna be a fun one. Um, yeah, what do you oh, yeah. do, do? You do you plan on um, doing any kind of opening videos for Crown Zenith? Are you gonna open any any of it like for a video or? Yeah, I might I might do just like I think the last time I did an opening video, I tried to do the world's fastest opening video it was like i had a i think it was probably my evolving skies box i opened and i tried i think i opened the whole box in like eight minutes for the video literally wow. just ripping through it going straight to the rare seeing what i pulled so not taking everybody's time going through everything slowly because god knows everybody's seen it by now um so it'll be one of those type of videos just trying to break a world record ripping pokemon packs going for the hit baby yeah, there's so many good cards too. Like it's so easy to hit, to hit something good. Hell yeah, yep. I really yeah. hope people chase, chase binders. Yeah, for this set, I really do. You've seen a bunch of the rattle stuff, opossum bud, talking about some of these guys uh, that are getting products early. What are your thoughts on the early, inadvertently released product getting shown on YouTube early and stuff like that? I hate it. Yeah, I like I hate it with a passion. Like I, I remember someone doing it. I don't remember who it was now. It was a year or so ago. It was a while back. Someone did it. They opened some. Uh, it was a YouTuber, and he opened some. And I just remember thinking, like, God, he's so dumb. Like that's so dumb. Like it's stolen. Like what? You didn't buy that at Walmart. Like yeah. it's weeks out from release. And if you did, like. You're telling me you wouldn't have taken a picture that you've you got an iPhone in your pocket. Everyone has a smartphone in the pocket. Guys, if you're in Walmart or in Target and you see a set, you're a Pokemon YouTuber and you see a Pokemon set that isn't yeah. out yet, you take a picture of that and post recording. it. Recording. Like, you're like start you're recording re while you're there. Vlog style. Record it. Oh my god, guys, you can't believe check this out. It's amazing. Like, there's absolutely no way you would just ignore it and pretend like whatever and then come home, get
get in your office and start recording and say, yeah, there's fun at Walmart. Like, no, none of that. Like, no, it really, really ticked me off. Uh, that kind of stuff. I'm very not okay with it for a couple of reasons. I, and I'll back it up with, with my reasoning. The first thing is like, you're freaking spoiling it for people. Cause now we're seeing cars that are like, we're excited for release date. We're excited for this to come out. We're excited for like nice, good people in the hobby to open these cards and support them and watch their openings. And you just blew like what the good cards are and some of the artworks and stuff. Like yep. it's like kind of ruins the experience a little bit. But sec the other part is you're kind of damaging like the reputation of like Pokemon YouTube. Right. Yeah. I mean, like you don't want to be associated with people like that that you know i don't know they obviously have supporters and people love them and stuff when they do those things but i just i like to surround myself with good people that have good intentions and a good heart like people that i try to be like and people that bring positivity and and a, and a, and a good for the world and good for the hobby i just don't I, I can't think of a single good thing that comes from them doing that so that's my uh passionate rant over what are your what are your thoughts on it please don't say you know, please, thought, please don't say you're gonna do it <laughs> that's pretty awesome man don't hit the player hit the game no <laughs> no i uh it's not cool um if you get it early open it for yourself just like you said kind of putting it out there putting in the video I think Japanese kind of ruins it for me in, <laughs> alone just because it comes out so much earlier. For but now. Uh, yeah, yeah. If that changes, that'd be amazing. But uh yeah, it's it's really just sus. It just does not feel good, does not feel right. Like you mm -hmm. said, like that was a great way of putting it. Being associated, not really associated with them, but we are in the Pokemon world on YouTube, and other people are gonna see these people and be like, uh it's kind of weird. He's getting a lot of hate from all these other guys. What's going on? Um, all the people in yep. the comment section are pumping him up, saying, this is awesome stuff. You're doing great getting this stuff early. Just show us all this early stuff. It's so cool. Um, it's really weird. And kind of going back to, like, your Collecticon state or not Collecticon, uh, whatnot statement, saying they might be gone in two years. You got people selling that stuff early on whatnot, and Pokemon could catch wind and – they got a pretty big hammer, so you better uh, hold on to your ankles there and whatnot and uh, maybe crack down a little bit on some of those early sales on whatnot for early release products. That's going to be interesting. They got to keep squeaky clean. The, like, Yeah, because it's so easy for, for them to do what they want on those streams right now. There's no like control, and it's – I don't know. There's uh, – but if you want to go watch a great whatnot streamer, Echo Base Collectibles and the old card shop, go check them out. Couple of legends. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about that's the other thing with it too, right? Is it's a similar situation there because you're ruining it for other whatnot people because they yeah they're, now people, they're tainted, right? Right, people are doing it, and the issue isn't joe it isn't uh, you know it isn't nick it isn't josh like it isn't people that are like using that app to sell and and create their own little community and their own entertainment which is like wildly fascinating when you watch them they're like really cool at it um it's the it's the bad guys and it's the company that isn't maintaining an honest true platform the way where they should be run but same thing as like we were saying with youtube like it, there's a taint there right there's a there's, yeah. a there's a bit of taste in your mouth when you have that I had a bad experience with uh, with a couple of purchases I did on whatnot really early on. Like I, I tried it really early on once. There was like two people live at a time. Like literally, I remember there being two people live on this this one Saturday. I was at the post office and um, I was just sat outside and I was I don't remember. I was waiting for something. I, I bid on something and um, I like clicked the button wrong or something. Whatever. I ended up buying like a hidden fates tin for like. $55 or something like it was like it was just ridiculous the guy shipped me the tin with just the one hit in it like it was like didn't ship me all the cards or the hollows or like anything really just shipped me one card with the tin and um it made me not want to buy from whatnot 
And I think there's going to be other people that are going to have experiences in the coming times. But yeah. They didn't get what they fully ordered or I don't know, they arrived damaged or they feel like they paid too much and now they got a bit of taste because they did it when they were drunk or whatever. Like, it's just like not a buying platform. Excuse me. It's like an entertainment platform. So sure. you need to be buying from, just like you said, you need to buy from Josh, you need to buy from, you know, uh, Echo and, uh, you know, Nick, like people that are in there. I think Mason was even playing around with it at one point. Like some of the guys that are like, actual sellers they're not scammers they're not doing spinny wheels and stuff um like to try and make money they're trying to do it like for entertainment like they're actually doing good stuff but if you're not in our realm you know of watching pokemon youtube and stuff you may not know who is good and bad and i think that's what's gonna hurt what not long term yeah yep that was a whole rant sorry guys no, good. Great information. Yeah. Kind of kind of getting into whatnot. You're, so if your thing gets like, we already got a little sneak peek over your uh, thoughts behind it. It's good. Great info. <laughs> you, uh, did you watch any uh, of the sick auctions this bit this weekend? Uh, I did not watch um, as much as I should have. I played around on PWCC looking if there's anything to bid on last week. Um, there's a few little things. I didn't really get any any bites, nothing too, uh, nothing too big on the hook. But I did see um, what you showed me. You, you're talking about with the the Creatures card on PWCC. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, if you, I don't know if you want, if you have info, you could talk about it or I can jump into it. It's up to you. Um, go for, go yeah. for it. Yeah, so the, there's Creatures deck cards um, inside of the PWCC auction. So the PWCC auction happened this weekend. There was a Heritage video game signature auction. Every weekend there's a Z&G Emporium auction, which is like a 1,000 plus items on Sundays. I'm um, going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of this video because I had some stuff rolling through there. Um, but yeah, the Creatures deck, I have a Zapdos card from there. Huge fan of Zapdos and when that came out, I had to buy one. So I've been keeping up with kind of just tabs, keeping tabs on what's going on with those. Um, and there is a $2,000 energy card, two of them that sold this past weekend, energy cards. Is there ever, I was curious, have you, can you think of a $1,000 energy card that ever existed? I don't think I can think of any. Yeah, I mean, I'm, the most expensive I can think of is the first edition base. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean those are 100, 150 bucks, maybe. Yeah. So uh, that's insane. Two grand. It's obviously limited release. There's estimated 350 to 450 copies of each card. So, but 2000 freaking dollars for a PSA 10. I think it was a lightning <laughs> energy or a fighting energy and then a double colorless energy. And then you got the actual Pokemon, like the Zapdos sold for like thirty seven hundred dollars. Mewtwo sold for over seven grand, both in PSA ten. Um, there's an one exclusive, like new art that came in the set. It's a trainer card that sold for the same as the Mewtwo, like a little over seven grand. Um, so that's pretty. I didn't even realize there was a new exclusive art. I know I've watched several creature deck videos, but knowing and seeing there's an exclusive, which is why it's so expensive. Um, and also the beta chancy, but that was not in the auction. That one usually gets a special place in like signature premium. Yep. Auctions. Um, pretty cool stuff though. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying PWCC. It's, uh, awesome to see what they're doing. Lots of cards every week still. It's, they've been just over a year so now, many. Weekly, a little over a week or a month or a year now having weekly auctions, which is crazy. Yeah, they still have so much volume too. There's still so much to like sift through and and uh, and check out. I, I think I have seen some like patterns. I've seen some cards that seem to come up every single week. You know, just because yeah. of volume. I don't know if it's you know same people doing it or not. It's just just kind of like a, a, a popular few cards. But there's definitely a lot of volume. But I do find it interesting when there's like card that you don't really see very often and it's like PSA 8 <laughs> and you're like 
Hmm. It's like cool. Like people, like people are buying it for like twelve dollars. Like I think that's yeah. like awesome. Like it's right there, just kind of like fun and cheap, and they're not like solely focused on the big heavy cards. Like you know, there's there's a there's a big selection to look at and play around with, but also like it is fun seeing their sports cards too. Like some of their sports cards they've had, they've had some crazy good cards. This past year, 2022 was insane for that for their sports card sales. Like, yeah, oof, like stuff that I, like I learned things from like looking at some of the cards that they had listed, some of the older stuff and the newer stuff. Like I learned things about sets and some of the players' names and stuff. Like it's been it's been good for me, like watching that stuff because I'm not really in it that 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 deep, you know. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Have you bought much? Um, looked at much of the sports stuff on there usually like my depth in sports is like detroit sports legends so i usually go through searching some of the hot names in detroit um yeah. some of the legends like steve eisman obviously a lot of people might know his name um <laughs> yesterday i think it was yesterday there was a bgs 10 eisman rookie card that thing was freaking awesome usually you don't see like bgs 10 vintage rookie stuff that thing, I don't remember the sale, the final sale price, but early on Sunday it was a, it was already five grand. So um, <laughs> leaps and bounds definitely closed much higher than any PSA ten. That would be a sick card. That would be a. I'm not a biggest BGS fan, but I, I can respect the BGS ten, especially on an old like old card. Really cool stuff. We yeah, had not too much outside of Detroit sports people. Yeah, Pokemon works out. And I know you're keeping an eye on the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff too. Yeah, it's kind of light this week. It was pretty light. Um, the first edition base though was pretty cool. I did did the quick math. Like somebody so like uh, did consigned a like an entire BGS set. It was like eight point fives. I think the whole set went for a total of about it was eighteen thousand dollars. Charizard was an eight point five or an eight. I think it was just an eight. But they average probably about an eight point five, but eighteen grand for all the first edition base hollows. Not bad. Yeah, the 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 prices in lots always surprise me. They either go high or they go low. They never seem to be like kind of what they should be selling yeah. at. It's interesting. Yep. Yep. Usually low, obviously, but I have seen them go high. I've seen a couple of occasions where you've you've shown some lots on the on the Wednesday um, auctions. Heritage. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Those sent for whatever reason. Heritage lots. The like the mid range, like I consider mid range, like five hundred dollars to like ten thousand dollars, like for a lot. Like those tend to do really well on Heritage. It's when yeah. you. Get, over fifteen grand is when they start tanking really bad. So there's le- less buyers in that range. Surprising. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that's when like auction gets tricky unless there's a lot of marketing around it. I guess you know, if you, like you've got to be in it to win it, but you, also people need to know <laughs> like where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, I got to ask you what. So there was, like I said, that video game auction that happened, uh, the signature, which is like the the cream of the crop of video games, all the big names. There was a a Wada ten for the for is basically like the black label um, because they're. I don't think I've ever seen a ten. Yeah, so usually nine point eight A plus plus is the highest. There is two tens in PS twos. PS2 games. Um, so only two exist. One of them went up for auction. It was a Grand Theft Auto 3 security seal game. If you had to throw a dart at the wall, guess what that game sold for? Mm. My 9.8 A++ GTA 3. It, it, this one's probably $150. This is not the security strip one. Security strip was first print. This is like later release. I'd say like five grand. I think it would go something crazy. It sold for $22,000. Stop. Oh my God. Yeah. That just wow. like speaks to conditional rarity. Because, and I, I, I was messaging Catch Them All, Dan, Catch Them All Collectibles. I was like, 
before the auction. I'm like, this thing's going to sell for 10 grand and uh, <laughs> for more than double. It just, it's insane. The, what conditional rarity does in video games alone. Obviously, Grand Theft Auto is one of the greatest series of all time, and GTA 3 was the first entry of PlayStation 2. So that being is just, it was like a, a unicorn. I, I counted it as it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they just don't come up. I, I can see why people would want to pay more, and that would hold a premium, but that's an extreme premium. That's like a lot of money. Yeah, for yep. sixty dollar game, fifty bucks, whatever it was at the time. I remember playing uh, Gun Theft Auto on the play- PlayStation One, and I was, yeah. I was so obsessed. I mean, I'd, I'd like go to bed at like stupid o'clock in the morning with my eyes red and burning because I'd been sat playing that game for so long. It was awesome. I loved that. I loved that thing so much. It was the that, uh, was, that was like top down view, right? PlayStation One. Yeah, and I'd, every so often you'd find the Cosworth uh, and you'd just be razzing around as fast as you can and they crash and everything's blowing up. Yeah, it was it was nuts. And then uh, I just I think I discovered some cheats. I think I got like I don't know, invincibility or unlimited ammo or it was like some cheat like that. And then it, it was like, oh, I just went full like Rambo. Just crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. It's fun back in the day. Kids nowadays have, they have, they, I don't think they've ever even heard of it, like the first one. I don't think they even knew that it was on PlayStation 1, honestly. Yeah, no, definitely not that game. I never even played that. What? No, never played the top down game. Never. No. Oh, that was pinnacle. That one, like, I think it was like Tekken 3, was it? The fighting one? Yep. Abe's World. That was huge. Future Cop, LAPD, Crash Bandicoot. Every everyone um, when they refer to Cool Train Orion as CTR, I know. I always, yeah, I always think of Crash Team Racing. That was the first video game I ever owned on PlayStation One. That was my first one. I was like whippersnapper. I was like young because I'm old guys. And uh, yeah, that was it. And uh, I always yep. think of. Of Crash because that game because of because of that it's funny. That is one of my favorite PlayStation One games. Me and my sister played that game forever, and it's always oh one God. I'm looking for in auction because I want one so bad sealed. Oh, that'd be so sweet. Yeah, that was that was a yeah that was a really really good game. Yep. Play oh, yeah. Played the hell out of that thing. Yeah, the uh, only other thing to note for the video game auction, the uh, CGC had recently. Um, so in the auction, they actually sold games that had pedigrees, like the first ever game graded, um, the first N64 game graded, the first whatever wow. game graded. And inside of this auction also, they had uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, kind of like this one here but it was a, a later print. And also, WADA had the same exact game in the same exact grade, and they pretty much pinned them up against each other. They auctioned within minutes of each other. One went, and then the next one went. So the CGC one sold for about sixty grand, and the WADA one sold for, I think, $38,000. So there's like a $22,000 difference for a brand-new grading company that graded the game in the same grade as the pre-existing grading company. People are speculating that the Wada one was slightly damaged and it should maybe didn't deserve that grade, but $22,000 swing and the new company smacked the living bejesus out of them. I couldn't imagine like CGC trading cards would never do that to PSA. That's a lot of money. I like that slab it's in. Yeah. I think a big part of it is is I think they're doing it well. I think they make they're quick and they're making good slabs. It looks presentable, strong plastic, it's nice and clear and shiny and yeah, they just seem to have a good service and a good setup. I I, I honestly do. I, th- I think they've got a good thing going. So I wouldn't be surprised, much like what you were saying, if they're going to do really well with it. You, you know, if it is going 
going to continue to be a thing and VHS and games, or you know, these other things start getting uh, a little bit even more traction. Yeah, I think I think they could easily take a pretty good capture of the market share for it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to hopefully some more uh, big. Uh, they should be having a signature auction for trading cards here soon. I hope for Heritage, but I'm not positive. So that'll be cool to check that out. They don't do crossover for games, right? If you sent a water what slab in, they might. I know they didn't. I don't think between Wada and VGA. I don't think, but mm. I'm sure they would. These things seem way easier and less scary to crack open than a TCG slab. I don't know. Seems easier. Less, um, especially Wada. But yeah, yeah, a little less like flimsy delicate type of thing yeah yeah i could i could put it in a vice and just <laughs> like i don't know I've, seems like it'd be pretty easy to crack open the top portion and get into that thing but maybe that's a video coming soon maybe i'll be cracking some and resubbing them to cdc <laughs> do it slab optimize my games do you think psa will start video games they own water oh of course they do of course they do everybody yeah yeah, they own Wada, so it's they're they're there. Yeah, what they need to do now is tie everything together a little better because they've got they've got a few different things going on. They've got fingers in a few pies, and it and it isn't streamlined together and clear. And like you say, you've got different names and stuff, you know. And we've got auction house, and we've got a card grading and game grading, and the vault. Like there's different things going all over the place. They need. They need some uh, brand identity, I guess, w- w- between them all. CGC obviously is doing that very strong. Like, yeah, very strong with what they're doing. I don't know. I kind of like. I almost like the way they kept it. I like ones that's got all these different. Obviously, PSA or collectors is like the umbrella. Then you have PSA, Card Ladder, Wada, Golden. Um, so CDC is all combined, but it reminds me of like Pepsi. You got Pepsi, you got Mountain Dew, you got Sierra Mist. You don't have like Pepsi Mist and Pepsi Dew. Like it's, I don't know, it kind of puts it in that boat, but I, I don't know. But hmm. I do like how they have their own branding. PSA video game sounds trashy because PSA stands for Professional Sports Authenticators. F that. Like I, I, I honestly am not a huge fan of the name because – because that's what they they grew up as as sports authenticators, and now they're grading Pokemon because there was money into it. So, yeah, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't doesn't bode well. The name doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, I I, I could feel that. Yeah. So, hold oh, man, you ready to wrap it up? What do you got going on this week? Anything uh, anything fun and exciting? I am. Yeah, I got a. I got that ETB, I got a crack, Kranzenith, got those uh, tins that I scammed myself on and uh, <laughs> got a little video I'm gonna I'm gonna put out uh calling ancient Mew out. So we'll see. And then um yeah, just kind of time with the baby and uh, and my daughter and wife, all the girls at home and everything. Uh, a lot of craziness going on there. What about you? Anything specific this week? Uh Nothing too too exciting. Just do my live stream Wednesday night, and I got a uh, did a big consignment through Z and G Emporium. Um, shout them out. Go check them out on eBay. Um, awesome guy. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Is it live? He's doing what? Is it live? It just ended Sunday. A bunch oh. of them. Yeah. So I'm gonna be doing a video, kind of recapping what I projected, what I got, and going through that, seeing what I ended up paying percentage wise in total because mm-hmm. not everything was over a hundred dollars by any means. It's probably 75% under a hundred dollars, if not more than that. So um, that's when you're paying a little bit more. So it'll be really cool to kind of show that. And obviously it would have been probably better to optimize, maybe send those things to somebody who has a flat rate of 20% because if I'm getting charged, whatever, 14% and $5 or 13.9% and $5 for a $15 sale. That's a hell of a lot more than 20%. So um, 
yeah, there's optimization I could have done, but I didn't. I just full sent it, and uh, it'll be cool to break it down. You've got the ease of the transaction and the yeah. time, and there's, That's, there's like – Yep, my problem is having no time right now, and I know you could relate big time with your your situation at home. And both of us again are full time working, and uh, selling Pokemon is awesome. And I I do it primarily for my high end cards on my own eBay. It's a lot less quantity, so um, when I want to offload a bunch of stuff, that would be the way to do it, or collect con or something like that. So um yeah so looking forward to future business that was the second time i've consigned through them last time was like two years ago i think <laughs> like it was 2021 or something wow. so they've been yeah pretty awesome so yeah check them out guys i'm I'm excited to hear about what comes of that you, you're gonna like break down the actual numbers that's the good yeah the yeah i was gonna show the total sales and yeah get into line or not go line by line but the high ones show the high ones for sure and yeah what i projected what i got and what i ended up paying percentage wise and i love that stuff i find that really interesting i know a few quite a few people do too yeah i think that'd be really cool I, i've seen you done it before too i think i think that'd be really nice yeah oh yeah so yeah man besides that just grinding work and living life surviving love it well I'm excited to see everyone's comments on what uh, spicy topic they want to talk about or whether they're just going to vote mine. Maybe yours. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's wrap it up. Thanks, right, everyone, man. for your support. Thank you, Josh, for the fun uh, conversation there. Hope everyone enjoyed it. We appreciate you. You keep tuning in and hitting that like button. and We appreciate it. It's fun. We're uh, we're enjoying doing this. So we've got a, we've got a fun year ahead. And uh, yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Peace. See ya. <laughs>